What's up, everybody? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. This is another one of our teaching tactics videos, which are kind of like the opposite of the lessons from Beyond the Grave, where we take a look at a clip from my stream where we executed a play well, and we kind of break down the thought behind those plays and potentially pull out some stuff that can help us continue to be better players. In this video, we're talking about how to like suss out if somebody has another teammate and how to kind of engage a fight even after you think you've won it to make sure that you're still safe. I stream Escape from Tarkov a few days a week. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you like this video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. All that stuff helps me out a ton. So thank you so much to those that do that. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So what we'll do is we'll watch the clip in its entirety, and then we'll kind of go back and break down the fight. I'm with a duo. We're playing on customs, and we're kind of moving through the map. Uh, the setup to this is we heard some guys fighting we pushed towards it we had just gotten engaged on a little bit we knew there were people so me and my duo kind of split and then this happened so we'll go ahead and take a look at the clip I'm he had a tx-15 yep two different caliber shot at me nate and me Killed one. okay I haven't even seen anybody yet. So what I named. I'm in the bus station. Okay. I'm super far away from you. I think there's another one in the woods. I'm on top of the bus station in Greenwall. I got one. I got one. I got one. Alright, I'm gonna push out towards you and then let's clear and if that's a TX-15, that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the kind of back wall like you would go to three-story dorms or two-story yep. dorms. My guy's not a TX. Coming up to you. This is me sprinting. Yep. Oh, Keep calling for me. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I'm tired of this yeah. walking. Yeah, I see you. My guy's right here. I'm almost positive, is it? TX, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I got him. Dead. Dead. Nice. Freaking work. So that ended up being a super fun fight. So we can kind of break that down. There was a lot that went on there, a lot of stuff that worked out really well for us. Right off the bat, like we were saying, we knew that there were people here. We had been engaged on. And one of the earliest call outs between me and my buddy was it's a TX-15. So, of course, that's not something that you can just know immediately. That takes a lot of playing the game. But... That is something, a tool that you can kind of put in your tool belt, the ability to kind of like learn what certain calibers and certain guns sound like. Um, and then even without having a bunch of knowledge of the game, the other thing we were able to call out is that there were two different, two different guns, two different calibers, whatever it was. When we had got engaged on prior to this clip, we heard the TX-15 because it has a pretty distinct sound. And we knew that somebody else was engaging as well. So we knew that there was at least two people and then we can use that information to kind of figure out uh, if these are the guys that you want to kill. Because a lot of times in Tarkov, you can think that you're following or stalking the same person and then you kill that person. And it turns out that that wasn't the original guy you thought and that that original guy ends up killing you. So we're able to use that to figure out what's going on. Um, once we kind of separate like this, he, my teammate kills somebody and uh, I kind of take a break because I, somebody threw a nade at me close and then he makes the call that he's all the way at the bus station on customs, which is kind of like on the other side of these woods on the road in front of me. But he's probably, you know, 100, 200 meters away from me. So I'm thinking, OK, I got somebody through a nade close. You killed a guy. I'm pretty sure there's somebody still up and they're going to be close. So I take this opportunity to get behind a little cover, trying to peek some tight little angles. He threw a nade. So the communication here is all about, OK, where are you? This is a little bit of a riskier play splitting this wide. In this situation, uh, we were able to use that to our advantage. We kind of split them as well, and we're able to kind of pick them off one by one. But we're far away from each other. We're entering that territory where if he starts moving back to my way, I'm going to be worried about a team kill because I know that there are enemies close. So he said he's by the bus station. He's jumping up on the side there to kind of like peek. So I'm going to take this opportunity to try and kind of peek out and fight anybody close so that I know that there's not anything to worry about for a team kill. I'm keeping moving. I spot the guy. 
Um, he's out in the open. I'm out in the open. There's not a whole lot of cover to use here but for the trees. I maybe peeked this a little wide, but we spotted him. We started shooting. My thought process there was actually pretty intentional where I see the guy. So I just start holding left click. Uh, suppression is a really underutilized mechanic in Escape from Tarkov. This is something that I think I want to make a video about eventually. But just putting shots their direction will oftentimes stress somebody out. They might make them miss a shot or they might make them run to cover. So you'll see how I kind of start off by just holding left click and strafing. And then once I kind of get close, I stop. I stop moving and I laser in on the guy. And it works because I don't think he ended up getting any actual shots on me. It helps that he had a semi-auto weapon and I was able to kind of full auto mag dump on him. Well, I, would, I was able to use that to uh, kind of freak him out a little bit and then get the kill. And then as you'll notice as well, I've got the 60 round mag, so I don't immediately hit that reload. I wait a second or two, then pull to a full mag just because I've died countless times when there's somebody right behind somebody and I'm in the middle of a reload animation. So with those big 60 round mags, you have the time to wait a second to figure out before you reload. The other thing that started happening here immediately after I killed that guy was, okay, we thought there was two. He's killed one. I've killed one. He checks his guy's body, doesn't find a TX-15. That was probably the other guy. So he starts calling, let's check this body to see if it's a TX-15 and let's be super careful. So he starts moving my way and he asked me to taunt for him. So F1 is just like the general taunt in Escape from Tarkov. And a lot of times you can use that to let your other, your duo or your trio or whatever know where you are. So we link up, we've been split, we've both eliminated somebody. Now it's time, let's link up. So let's, uh, to avoid confusion, let's figure out what's going on. So this is kind of the the meat of the, of the video where we're talking about being able to suss out if there's another person or if there's somebody else. And the movements here after we think the fight is over. I think that's the meat of, you know, the, the point of this video is how we move after we think the fight is over. So he, I'm pretty sure he even calls out, let's check if it's a TX-15 and clear the area. So I move up on him. I see it is a TX-15. I search him to double and triple check, but I don't loot him. So there's two of us. We thought there were two. We've killed two. But the two things is one, we don't immediately go for the loot. I don't think he's looted the guy he killed yet either. And we start to cl clear around and we never stop moving. As soon as I drop this guy, even earlier on, my movement is very erratic. I'm trying not to uh, walk in one direction too frequently. I'm trying not to sprint too long. I want to keep my gun close to the ready if I can. We link up. We're back and forth. I'm using, I'm trying to check. I'm kind of looking everywhere to see if there's a third. We check the body. I don't loot it. We're constantly moving. We're staying on the move and we're even split a little bit. So once I realize he's going this way, I kind of turn around and go back this way because I don't want to be super close together that we're just going to get sprayed down by one person. Now, once we hear the shots that we get engaged on, I think this third enemy thought we were going for the loot because we were kind of congregating on the body. Once that happened, I split from him and I was able to see the muzzle flashes of the M4 because it was unsuppressed. I actually saw that before I saw the person. So I heard my teammate get engaged on. Um, I start looking around. I don't want to be right next to him because I don't want to get mowed down by one mag. And I start to see the muzzle flashes of the enemy. And I know right around here, I know he's in that bush there. So he engages with my duo. My duo returns fire, which causes this guy, this guy to probably want to hit a reload. So he starts trying to get to cover. I was able to be in an angle where he couldn't even see me. He probably didn't even know I had split. And I was able to, we were basically able to focus fire this guy down while he was trying to get to cover. So this was a play that just felt, it felt really good. It felt like we were in control of the situation the entire time. That There was no point where, um, of course, you're always scared that you're going to, you know, just get, you know, a lucky tap to the face or something like that. But we felt in control of the situation. We kept the communication between me and my duo pretty minimal so that we could hear and use the audio. Uh, but it was all very valid information on where he was, where I was, when to link up, when we were going to stay apart. And uh, 
kind of calls by him on like, let's check if it's a TX-15, let's clear the area first. And just from playing a lot, we both know to keep, keep moving. So this ended up working out really, really well. We really did not know that that third person was there. Um, it was an unsuppressed M4 that guy was shooting us with, and we hadn't heard that gun before. So we really didn't know he was there. So this is hopefully something that can teach you if you are somebody that maybe wins your first fight a lot, but dies while you're looting or dies clearing the area. Hopefully, whether you're playing with a duo or not, that this kind of breakdown can help show um, how to identify if you've killed the guy that you're looking for and how to move around and potentially suss out if there's a third person or more and uh, get them to engage with you and then potentially be able to kind of clean up, actually fully finish that fight and move on. Um, so yeah, I hope that this helped. I hope that clips like this and videos like this um, help you learn a little bit about the game and give you a little bit more confidence to get into your raids and escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out the video. Once again, if you like the video, please leave a comment down below. If there's anything I missed or if there's anything you want to add to the conversation, drop a like on the video or subscribe to the channel for more content like this. That stuff really, really helps me out. Like we said before, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. My link will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play with, we have an awesome, awesome Discord community with a few thousand members, Tarkov veterans, new players, everything in between. You can get somebody to help you with quests or run some raids. It's an awesome place to be. That link will be down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see you all on the next one.